So often when you're building software, one thing that you end up needing to do is optimizing the performance of whatever system you're building. In this case, I'm building a game, and I notice that when a certain amount of zombies spawn in this game, the game gets a little laggy, right? So what I'm gonna show you is how to kind of read a flame graph and how to generate these profile charts that kind of break down what is causing so much time to be consumed in your services. And just figuring out how to use this is just another tool that you should add to your toolbox that makes it easier to build more performance systems. So the way I like to get this set up is you first need a JavaScript debug terminal. So if you go into a command shift P and type in JavaScript debug terminal, that'll open up a little terminal down here where you can run your node process or you can do like an npm run dev. And when you run this, this is actually going to start your game with a debugger attached to it. So you can actually go through and like step through code. You can add breakpoints. It's really good to understand how this works. For example, if I want to add a breakpoint right here, let me run this. And when the server first starts, you'll notice that we get a breakpoint that stops here. We can actually step over or step into function calls and understand how the code, and this can sometimes be critical when trying to fine tune or find performance issues or just like really obscure bugs you just can't debug. Using the debugger and stepping through your code helps you understand it logically and can help you figure out the issue for whatever bug you're trying to debug. But the thing I wanna point out, if I were to go back to where the update method is called, there's a console.profile function that you can actually invoke and a console.profile in. So if you kind of sandwich a function call between these two lines, what happens is as your code is running, it is going to generate a file for you called VS Code Profile. So this is basically gonna track the memory usage and the CPU usage of your service and print out these files. Let me go ahead and just restart the map so I can get a fresh profile of this game running with a bunch of zombies. You can see here it's starting to get a little bit laggy. And I'll just go ahead and just let my character die. And I'll just stop this. Let's go back over here. I'm going to stop my service. And then if I go and scroll down, you'll see I have a bunch of these, right? Now, again, there might be a better way to do this. And let me know in the comments if you know of a better way. But from what I've seen, you have to kind of step through some of these. And then you'll get information. Some of these have some information about what method was consuming the most amount of time when running a server tick. So if you look up here, get closest alive player during that profile was taking up 11 milliseconds of my time. And you can actually go over here and click on this flame graph icon. If I were to hide my head and click on this little flame, it'll convert this to something called a flame chart or a flame graph. This is just another visualization of the call stack and like where do, where's the most time spent trying to run through your code. So if you look here, there's an update function. Inside the update function, we are updating all the entities in the game. And then we call update on those. And then we update all the extensions of those entities. And eventually we get to updating the enemy, which happens to take up a majority of the time, right? Having all these zombies do pathfinding and try to walk towards the player eats up a lot of CPU cycles. And so you can kind of understand, okay, there's handle attack, which is taking about 13, almost 14 milliseconds. And there's get closest alive player, which is taken like five milliseconds. Okay. So this helps you determine where most of the time is being spent. Again, when you want to increase the performance of a system, find the, the biggest place in your code base that's eating up the most time and focus on tackling that first. And then you can come back to the smaller things. So it looks like uh, update enemy is calling get closest alive player. And then it calls get closest alive player. So it's calling the same function. This function eats up quite a lot of time. So let's go ahead and click on this function and we will just try to figure out why does get closest alive player seem to eat up all the time in my game server. So let's go over here and look at this function real quick. Okay, so this basically gets all the player entities and then it filters and finds the ones that are not dead. It looks like get player entities is actually kind of eating up some of that time. So you can kind of go in here and look at this, like why is this causing so much time? Well, it loops over all thousands of entities, every single game tick, and then it just filters out. So this is a very naive approach to finding the players in your, your game. And the flame chart, the flame graph, just helped us pinpoint one method that we can improve and make a little bit better. And so what you could do is let's just say, can you refactor this to instead Cache the players when they are added and removed from the game so that I don't have to filter through thousands of entities just to find the players. Okay. 
Now let's just go ahead and let AI do this. Obviously, I could do this myself. You go up to the top, you make a, a players array. When I add an entity, I'd push into it. When I remove an entity, I remove from it. There's different ways you can do this. You could have like a hash map of entity type mapped to a set of different entities. Honestly, like it's just, it doesn't really matter too much. So let's just go ahead and apply this. And then we'll see, okay, look, it added a players array. When I add an entity, it pushes it. When I mark an entity for removal, it looks like it removes it from there. And then it clears it down here. And then that just kind of returned the array as is. So let's go ahead and save that. And then we're gonna basically restart our benchmark, okay? Let's restart our benchmark. Let's also remove all those VS Code profiles again. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and connect and we're going to go ahead and see is the performance a little bit better, right? So this feels a little bit smoother, but the only way to actually tell again is to make sure you get those flame graphs, make sure you get those profiles, and then you can kind of look at the code, okay? So let's go back over here, let's stop this. And then we have all these profiles, we can kind of take a peek at them. Let's find one that actually has some good information. And notice that the method we just refactored doesn't seem to show up in any of these things. So I think we just managed to shave off a decent amount of time. Again, if you go back to the flame chart, you can keep looking at, you know, where is it spinning most of the time now? Because it doesn't seem like it takes much time to even get the alive players because that's basically just returning an array of one person, right? So it's super fast now. Um, but it looks like another place is when the enemies are moving around, okay? Again, try to tackle the places in your code that eat up the most time especially if you have to loop over a giant array of things and you're calling the same method multiple times or like thousands of things, it makes sense to do optimizations that are called a lot. And so all the zombies we have in the game as they update, they have to handle their movement, okay? They have to figure out if they're colliding with stuff. So let's just go ahead and look at is colliding real quick. And this is basically looping through and getting all of the entities near a certain hitbox. If you look at this, this is using a quad tree, and then the quad tree is basically diving in and doing a recursive call into multiple different cells of the quad tree, and it turns out that this is eating up quite a lot of bit of time, okay? So from doing this investigation, the game server just wasn't running very performant, and I wanted to make it work a little bit better. So I did some refactoring, and I switched back to the spatial grid that I talked about in a video prior. Um, but let's just go ahead and check out main. I'm going to stash everything. I'll check out main. Um, let me just make sure I'm on the latest. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and just say, uh, let's go to the server code. Let's add the profilers back. And then npm run dev. Let's just go here. I'll change this to three. Let's go to map manager. Let's go ahead and change this to like one. Okay. So now let's check out the performance. It's going to spawn a bunch of zombies like we did last time. But we will be able to see, did we fix potentially this performance issue? Um, after we get a couple of profiles. Okay, the game's over. Let's go ahead and go back over here, stop the server, and let's dive through. So let's find one that gives us some more information. Okay, this one looks pretty good. Okay, so now you'll notice that the, the width of this is much smaller. Like before, I don't know what it was, but I think it was kind of, you know, 26 to 36, you know, milliseconds to do the entire process. Now it's down to almost 10 milliseconds to do a, a game server update, right? So if you're building out a game server, you want to make sure that you run as efficiently as possible so that your tick rate can be consistent. The moment your stuff starts taking too long to update, you're going to see slowdowns. You're going to see basically stuff skip around, stuff just lag. And so now we can just dive into this. And it looks like we have update a broadcast game state, which must be doing something by like looping over uh, all of the different change entities. And then we also have update entities. This now takes 3.8 seconds. Now, granted, you should probably kind of take a peek at all these, like just to make sure you're not looking at the wrong profile. This one calls update entities. It has update. It updates the extensions. Eventually, it's going to get to the zombie. And you can kind of zoom in if you want to. Uh, it can kind of help you visualize what's going on. But eventually, you'll get to the zombie. And it's again, it's updating the enemy, handling the movement, checking if we're colliding with stuff. But overall, this stuff is much faster than it was. Okay. And the reason is because I switched this back to do a spatial grid. Okay. Instead of using that quad tree, it's using a spatial grid. And for some reason, it's more performant in my game. Maybe the quad tree implementation could use some refactoring to improve the performance. But overall, this makes the game 
much more smooth and then i can have a lot more players in the game and a lot more enemies without it starting to lag i hope you guys learned something new watching this video again learn about the profiler learn about the flame graph and you will appreciate the insight it'll give you into your slow code that you wrote have a good day happy coding